The Cold War saw the introduction of another Boeing, the six-engine B-47. 2,000 were built, and the aircraft remained in service until well into the 1960s. Its principal mission was nuclear deterrence. In the United States, the thinking was that if the Soviet Union became a real threat or launched missiles at the United States, the B-47 could immediately fly over the polar region and attack. A young U.S. Air Force Lieutenant, Carl Wayne Watchmuth, had been assigned to B-47s in 1959. Uh, most of that was, was what we called home alert or reflex alert, with the airplane actually uh, sitting cocked uh, at the end of a runway or in a parking area very nearly the runway, uh, uh, ready to take off. Uh, uh, in the U.S. here, we used to figure we needed to be airborne in 15 minutes. Uh, some of the overseas bases I was at, uh, were in Spain, they used to say we need to be off the ground eight minutes after the horn went off. Uh, because when the, when the missile era started to creep in, then why the warning time went down to zip almost. And so uh, we had to have very rapid response for that. So it was, a, it was a nuclear bomber and probably would have done an excellent job if it had been ever called to do the, what it was designed for because it was uh, a maneuverable airplane. Uh, you could roll a B-47, uh, folks did it. Uh, I won't claim to have done it uh, because it wasn't something you were supposed to do. Uh, it was a fast airplane. We, we flew, uh, we could fly low level at 425 miles an hour, 425 knots, which is in excess of 500 miles an hour. It, it flew very well. It uh, was a very responsive airplane. Uh, it had power controls, uh, hydraulic uh, power controls on all three axes uh, so that uh, uh, you didn't have to really horse it around. The aeroplane, with its swept wings, pod-mounted engines, and bubble canopy, looked rather like a cross between a jet fighter and an early commercial jet airliner. Three-man crew. You had uh, an aircraft commander, a pilot, a uh, co-pilot, and the, the navigator, who was also your radar bombardier, uh, in the nose, and, uh, and a rather black windowless compartment up there. there but the two pilots sitting up in that bumble canopy almost like a jet fighter yeah, excellent view the closest the b-47 came to combat was during the cuban missile crisis in 1961 missiles from the soviet union aimed at the u.s mainland were found on cuba armed and ready to fire president kennedy imposed a naval blockade against the soviets and put all u.s forces on a wartime footing B-47s were among the aeroplanes assigned to maintain a presence over the Soviet fleet in the Western Atlantic and were put on alert throughout the rest of the United States. Everybody was pretty grim during the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, and there's no denying that. Uh, uh, we had a head start on it because uh, SAC was already generating its entire force uh, putting this thing on alert and, and, and loading the airplanes before President Kennedy made his speech. Uh, so we were a little bit uh, ahead of the game on that. Requiring a full retaliatory response. Ultimately, the Soviets backed down and agreed to remove their missiles from Cuba. The crisis ended. While it never dropped a bomb in combat, the B-47 set the pattern for all jet transports that followed, particularly the big bombers. If you look at the B-47 and then look at every commercial airliner, every subsequent big bomber like the B-52 and so forth, the B-47 is his granddaddy. It's a swept wing, uh, streamlined fuselage, underslung engine pods were things that the designers at Boeing came up with you look at everything we fly today that's a good-sized airplane, and it's the same lineage all the way through. We haven't really made any more leaps since that. This was the first of its era, and, and uh, for the first crack out of the box was an outstanding airplane. <laughs>